Hey everyone, welcome back to the One-Eyed Cooking Guy. You know, when I started this One-Eyed Cooking Guy venture, I had three goals in mind. One was to post some recipe videos of delicious vegan food that I cook for myself and show everybody how easy it is to do it for themselves as well. Uh, but I also had the goal of teaching people what life is like living with one eye and also a little bit more about ocular melanoma, which is the cancer that took my right eye uh, a few years ago. So this video is the first of three parts to kind of give you an overview of what ocular melanoma is, how it's diagnosed, how it's treated, and some things that maybe you can do to lessen your risk of going through everything that I've been going through. So I think we're all familiar with skin melanoma. It's also called cutaneous melanoma. By the way, this is not an actual picture of my back and shoulder. I got this off the internet, but I got it off the internet to demonstrate for you all these brown patches. Do you see the moles and the freckles that this person has on their skin? Many of us do have those. And we've always been taught that you cover them up either with clothing or with a really powerful um, SPF of sunscreen so that that UV light can't get into the uh, the moles and freckles and cause problems. And where the problems start are in the cells that provide the pigmentation, the coloring for these parts. You notice that all of these spots are a darker color than the rest of the skin. That's because they contain melanocytes. Uh, and in melanoma, those melanocytes go bad and they turn cancerous and they can spread, those cells can spread to other parts of the body. What most people don't realize is that those patches of moles and freckles with melanocytes can also grow in our eyeball. If you take a close look in this picture here, you'll notice in the colored portion of my eye there around my pupil that there are some darker patches there. Each one of those patches is called a nevus, kind of a fun word to say, and I'm a word geek and I love the fact that the plural of nevus is nevi. That's just like a side note, different video. Anyway, we can have nevi in our eyeballs and they can turn bad just like the ones on our skin can. And that's what happened to me. Side note here also, I used to get so many compliments on my eyes because people would tell me, you have freckles in your eyes, it looks so cool. And who knew that all those years later after getting those compliments, it would be the freckles in my eyes that would turn bad and force me to deal with the reality of cancer. So here's some facts about OM put out by the Ocular Melanoma Foundation. I think this is a really good graphic. You can pause here if it goes by too quickly so that you can read it all. But basically, um, the highlights I want to give you is that ocular melanoma, or OM, is a really rare type of cancer. Um, only between five to seven people out of a million get diagnosed with it each year, so it's classified as an orphan or rare cancer. Um, it hits people generally who are over 50 years old. Um, most of them are of Northern European descent with light colored eyes. But you know, I've met in my last three years with this cancer journey, I've met plenty of people who do not fit those descriptions who um, are very much younger than that, who come from different backgrounds, different parts of the world. So it definitely is a cancer that can affect um, all kinds of people, but there also is a profile of the main type of patient it seems to affect. Pause here if you want to read more. You might think that just like we wear clothing or sunscreen on our skin for skin melanoma, that just putting on a pair of sunglasses like I have here would be enough to protect your eyes from ocular melanoma. Unfortunately, this is where ocular melanoma differs from skin melanoma. Researchers, scientists aren't exactly sure what the process is that starts those melanocytes in the freckles um, turning cancerous, but there's a lot of research that shows it's not related to direct UV light. Uh, many of the tumors that form, form in the center or the backs of our eyeballs, which I'll show you in a minute, um, and th those parts don't get hit by UV light when we're not wearing sunglasses, and yet tumors still occur there pretty regularly. That's not to say to never wear sunglasses. I still wear them as much as I can to protect in case UV light is affecting the freckles that are closer to the surface of my eyeball. Putting up this graphic made me realize I forgot to also say that some people call ocular melanoma uveal melanoma. You might hear that as well. Um, and I just wanted to point out that those two terms are pretty interchangeable in most um, communities that I've been a part of. Uh, I, the majority of people I interact with use ocular melanoma, OM, as the name for the disease that we're all dealing with, but um, uveal melanoma means the same thing. So that's why you see that in the title. 
The reason why I wanted to pop up this graphic is because I think it does a good job showing the three main places where doctors usually find ocular melanoma tumors. The first place they can occur is in a part of your eyeball called the choroid. You can see it labeled up there in the upper right. Um, that's where my tumor was located. Sometimes choroidal tumors are way in the back like that, and sometimes they're a little more forward. Mine was closer to the center of my eyeball than this picture shows. Um, and those are the tumors that are kind of a mystery because they're not exposed to UV light. So no matter how much UV light goes into our eyeball, it's not making it all the way to the back of our eyeball, we're pretty sure. Um, and so my doctors tell me that there's still research ongoing for how some of these tumors start without um, UV light starting them. The other two places where um, ocular melanoma tumors are found, the first one's called the iris, and that's the color part of your eye. Um, as you're looking at this diagram, here's the front of your eyeball, and that's the back of your eyeball. So all the way up in the front where the colored part of your eye is, you can get um, freckles and ocular melanoma there as well. Um, and then there's also uh, a band of muscle that sits behind your iris, behind the colored part, that's called the ciliary body. Um, and ocular melanoma tumors can occur in the ciliary body as well, although they're much less common. I've also met people who have a variety of different eye tumors that aren't necessarily ocular melanoma or that started as ocular melanoma, but then spread to other parts of the eye socket or their face. So um, those happen as well, although they seem to be um, much less common than choroidal melanoma. That seems to be the main type I hear about from most of the people I interact with. So if exposure to UV light is not causing all of these tumors, what is causing the tumors? Well, as I mentioned a little bit ago, that's something that the scientists and the doctors don't really have an answer for yet. Um, one interesting aspect in this whole ocular melanoma thing is that it's been discovered that there are clusters in the United States, particularly one in Alabama uh, and one in North Carolina, where clusters of people who are gathered around those geographical areas have all been diagnosed with ocular melanoma. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, ocular melanoma is really rare. Only five to seven people out of a million will be diagnosed with it per year. Um, and so to have so many people who all get the same cancer diagnosis of the rare cancer all living around the same geographical area obviously raises some eyebrows. So some money's been put into researching if there could potentially be an environmental cause to all of this. Um, but so far, in all the reading I've done, no, nothing has come out yet to definitively say that these cancers might be caused by anything environmental. Okay, so now after learning all this information about ocular melanoma, you may be wondering what can you do to avoid these types of eye issues? And the number one piece of advice that everyone in the ocular melanoma medical community will give you is to have regular eye exams. Even if you have 20-20 vision and don't use glasses or contacts, you should be going in for regular eye exams. And when you go in for those exams, you must request that they do those exams with dilation. You need your pupils dilated. I love this graphic. I share it with as many people as I can because it really shows you why dilation is so important. In this picture over here on the left, that's an eye being examined without dilation. And look at that little shaft of light going through the middle. That, that's the only place that eye doctor can see in terms of looking for tumors. But if you look at the picture on the right, that eyeball, that pupil has been dilated. Um, and look at how much more of the eyeball that doctor can see and potentially catch those tumors early um, and get treatment started early. So the number one thing I will say is to please always go in for your eye exams, get your eyes checked with dilation. That's the end of my first video. My next video, I'm going to be talking about treatment of ocular melanoma tumors. How are they treated? Um, one thing I want to remind you is I am not a doctor. I'm a teacher. I teach English and I don't have any credentials in the medical field at all. So if you have any issues with your vision or you have any big OM questions that come up, please, of course, go talk to a medical professional and your doctor. But if you have any questions that I can answer, feel free to put them down in the comments. And I hope this video helped teach you a little bit more about ocular melanoma.